The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light, sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيبنا ونبينا أبي القاسم محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين الغر الميامين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين ما دي الدكتور um, we've reached um, where the Holy Prophet uh, is about to enter Medina with Amir al Mu'minin. So, with regards to them entering the whole uh, Medina, any important incident occurred during the entrance? What do we know? about that. Um, <coughs> yes, as we said that in the, in the previous episode that the, Imam Ali, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi waited for Imam Ali until he arrived and uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wanted to make sure that he arrived in the city of Medina along with Imam Ali alayhi salam. And Imam Ali was alongside him, um, and he never separated from uh, the Prophet sallallahu And um, um, of course, uh, it's when uh, the the Muslim people of uh, Medina, the Ansar especially, they were extremely pleased to see the Prophet uh, sallallahu alaihi finally arriving there uh, in their city. He has honored them and. Uh, blessed the city uh, of Medina um, and uh, they all invited him to stay with them because obviously they knew that he didn't have any accommodation for himself and just like just like they invited um, and accommodated the Muhajireen those immigrants who, who, who left uh, Mecca for Medina because they were persecuted um, by Quraysh while the, they were in Mecca just as they invited them and they housed them and accommodated them in their own properties, they also invited Imam Ali, uh, the Prophet along with Imam Ali But in order not to um, make, uh, uh, at least a choice, so that in case, for instance, if he accepted one people, uh, uh, one person's uh, invitation, mm -hmm. others might be. Um, uh, for example, upset that they had, they, he hadn't accepted the, uh, uh, their invitation, uh, the Prophet said that uh, they, would, they were pulling the uh, camel of the Prophet so that they could take them to their uh, places. But the Prophet said, leave the camel alone in Naha Ma'amura, that it is instructed, Allah will instruct it. It will, it will stop and uh, sit wherever uh, it sits and then I will be, um, I will stay with the people nearby. And uh, the camel went until it, 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 it uh, stopped and it sat down, uh, sat on the ground uh, near the house of, uh, or the property of uh, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, which of course Abu Ayyub was very pleased. Um, and in this way no one was offended as well. In this way no one was which offended. Which was uh, very smart. Yeah. And... Um, and uh, Abu Ayyub was telling his mother, who was blind, that um, you know the Prophet is uh, has arrived in Medina. Not only that, he is um, staying with us. And she said, oh, "If only I could see his face." Um, 
but unfortunately I can't. And uh, it is said that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa brought her near. She said, he said she should come near to him. She, she came and she, he prayed for her. And uh, this is one of the miracles of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa that uh, she could see. And uh, so there were, so there were uh, <coughs> it was a double um, blessing for, uh, for Abu Ayyub. And for her mother. Not only she could see, but she could see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa uh, So it's an extremely honorable thing. Um, it is said that they stayed with Abu Ayyub and um, um, while they, um, people started, uh, the, the Prophet ﷺ instructed the people that they should start um, identifying place and uh, for building the mosque, mm -hmm. the central mosque if you like, which became known as the mosque of the Prophet ﷺ, Masjid al-Nabi, mm -hmm. which uh, of course uh, still exists, of course, on a, it, it's been expanded um, beyond recognition compared to what it was before. Of course. What about the, um, the, um, the Muslims when they were in Medina? So the Holy Prophet وآله, is going to stay with Abu Ayyub. He's hosted by Abu Ayyub um, until they start building to basically arrange for the settlement. Uh, what happened to the Muslims, the rest, the companions, the people, the yes. Muslims who migrated? What happened with them? Where did they stay? Well, they had already found accommodation before the arrival of the Prophet Sallallahu and it is stated in the Quran that despite the fact that they were in, if you like, uh, material hardship, they didn't have much to offer, but they, the, the Ansar, uh, the supporters, the people of Medina, they um, offered all they could to the migrants mm. and um, they shared whatever they had with them. <clears throat> and um, this is stressed in the Quran, of course, uh, this is how it went. So, if you like, all the people who had uh, uh, preceded the Prophet arriving in the, uh, the city of Medina, uh, they had at least somehow, some, they found some sort of accommodation. Did the uh, Holy Prophet, uh, peace be upon him, put this in place before? Was it something that they communicated with the Ansar prior to the migration that the people would have been taken care of and uh, they would be they, allocated? That's to right. They said. They said that at that, at that time, well, it was Mekina, we, with open arms, we receive our brethren, Muslim brethren from Mecca, and they did. And as I said, they are praised in the Quran. Uh, we have a, an ayah in the Quran in this respect. Um, <clears throat> so they, um, once they were there, the Prophet was, um, as I said, was hosted by Abu Ayyub. And of course, it is said that he also, the Prophet stayed with other, Bani Amr, Ibn Auf, hmm. uh, and other tribes while this mosque was uh, being built. And of course, the Prophet ﷺ himself was helping. They were making, uh, if you like, the bricks. Uh, and um, they were building the mosque. Uh, so, And of course, it is said, according to this narration, which is in the Kafi, uh, that uh, they built uh, a, 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 the mosque for, and also uh, some places of residence for the Prophet and Imam Ali, um, alayhi wasalam, so they, this was going on until, if you like, uh, the, 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 prophet, um, sorry, the mosque and the accommodation for the Prophet uh, was completed. Um, um, so this, this, these, these were the first things that, um, if you like, took place uh, when the Prophet arrived in Medina. Would the, would the Holy Mosque, the Mosque of the Holy Prophet, would it be also um, a headquarters for the establishment of the Islamic government? Um, if you like, it was the center at that time okay. for um, every or most activities, um, activities to do with uh, running the uh, affairs of the people mm -hmm. uh, of Medina and beyond, um, uh, if there were any. Uh, so the entire population accepted the new system or did we have certain some tribes or some people who opposed it did they all follow were there any problems between uh, the residents of medina were they all ansar uh, if, you, if you want to talk about whether they, they all followed um, um, no we know that uh, at least on the surface <coughs> in medina mm. We didn't have disbelievers, um, 
or we didn't have mushrikeen uh, polytheists mm. um, uh, in Medina. But um, as it's mentioned in the Quran, uh, which uses the term uh, munafiqeen, we did have people who uh, on the surface presented, pretended to be Muslims, but in fact they weren't. Um, and um, there are um, numerous occasions where these are cited in the Holy Quran. And in fact, we have a whole surah, a chapter of the Quran called al um, the if you like, the hypocrites or people who had uh, uh, pretended to be Muslim, but in fact they weren't. Um, <coughs> of course, alongside that, we had also uh, Jewish communities in, in, in Medina. Um, and, uh, did they remain? They, did they, they remained as, as they were. Of course, throughout the stay of the Prophet ﷺ, there were many debates and discussions and dialogue between uh, Jewish individuals, Jewish scholars, and the Prophet ﷺ, and many embraced Islam um, during uh, the uh, stay of the Prophet ﷺ in Medina during the 10 years. And of course, that continued. There were Jewish scholars used to come from far afield and uh, uh, they say, we want to speak to the Khalifa of uh, uh, your Prophet. And they used to say, here it is, Khalifa of the Prophet, Abu Bakr. And they used to ask questions and he couldn't answer. And, um, mm. you know, uh, they used to say, obviously, there's something wrong because we expected that the Khalifa of, the, of be knowledgeable would be able to answer our questions or should be knowledgeable and so on. And people said to them, look, you need probably try someone else and they used to send them to, to Imam Ali alayhi well. salam <coughs> and they used to ask their questions uh, and they received receive the appropriate replies mm. of course we'll come into that probably yes. uh, some other time but so. then they used to say we really see that you are the Khalifa of, of, of the Prophet because sallallahu alayhi wa because um, you, you are answering all the questions uh, <coughs> yeah. um, and of course on many occasions they used to uh, say the shahadatain, say the two testimonies, and become Muslims. So this, um, the presence of the um, Jewish or Christian scholars um, was there always. Um, <coughs> the, the, some kept their Jewish identities and they kept their religion and practice and so on. And some did accept uh, the religion uh, of the Prophet because they say that we find it in our books, uh, this, you are the one that we've been waiting for. Um, so they didn't really have, it wasn't something odd, something strange, out of the blue, they were expecting it. In fact, the fact that we have <coughs> um, many uh, Jews or uh, numerous Jewish communities in Medina and around Medina and Mecca as well, uh, because they had arrived there waiting for the final prophet. But the problem, the problem for them was the fact that the Holy Prophet was not amongst them was not among one of them. For those who wanted to, uh, yeah. this was the argument, you know, our, mm, because they wanted to stick to what the mm, status quo and what they had, mm. and if you like, uh, not go according to the, what they found written in the books. But otherwise, <coughs> those who uh, embraced Islam knew that those Jewish scholars and uh, Jewish individuals who embraced Islam, they knew that um, he was the one that is being talked about in their in their books, and uh, that didn't make any difference whether it was from uh, the line of Ismail or Ishaq, um, Isaac. But those um, who accepted it became Muslims. Yeah. Same as the uh, early Christians who believed in the message of Nabi Isa mm -hmm. mm -hmm. became Muslims. Yes. Well, alhamdulillah. Um, so at this point, at this point, um, I wanted to discuss also about the pledge of brotherhood between the Ansar and the Muhajirin. Uh, what led to that? What was the wisdom behind it? What led to that? And also, what I wanted to um, um, touch is with regards to who was the brother for Rasulullah mm. sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yes. Um, the just to conclude from the previous so uh, from the topic that you said that whether there were people opposing and so on. Yes, there were, and um, <coughs> and the. People used to um, oppose or say contrary to what the Prophet is saying, mm. um, uh, even concerning 
battles and so on, people fleeing from battlefields. Uh, so we, 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 we've got all these things. There are all the problems that you would think they were there right from the word go. Um, um, and apart from the fact that you, ha you had other communities, as I said, Jewish or scholars, um, uh, sorry, Jewish or Christian uh, communities uh, there, but there were those who were sent to be Muslim, and uh, the ones that are referred to by the, in the Quran as uh, Munafiqeen. Um, <coughs> um, so they were causing problems all along, um, which, in fact, again, is mentioned in the, in the, in the, in the Holy Quran that uh, to the extent that they wanted to assassinate the Prophet. So it was as far as that. And they tried to assassinate him on numerous occasions, but we'll come into that. Uh, as to your question of um, um, uh, Pledge of Brotherhood, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, um, did uh, this mu'akhat that... Um, so that's why it's called mu'akhat. Mu'akhat, that they pledge to be brothers of one another between individuals. Um, on one occasion in, in, in uh, Mecca and another occasion on Med in Medina. And... Uh, uh, for example, he he uh, pronounced uh, this mu'akhad or this pledge of brotherhood between uh, Salman and Abu Dhar. Um, the, uh, I just mentioned some of the uh, names which are m m well known. Um, so also, he, he did mu'akhad uh, uh, or pledge of brotherhood between Abu Bakr and Umar. And, um, did he? Yeah. So. Abu Bakr didn't take uh, one of the Ansar. He put uh, Abu Bakr with yeah, Umar. Yeah. Abu okay, Bakr. we need to touch a bit that because everything, everything the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi does, it's also, as you've mentioned, instruction from Allah subhanahu wa taala. And there's something beautiful here, out of with regards to the personality. So, um, when you tell me things like this, I I always you know try to analyze them and try to extract any any. Um, messages or evidence or, or clues so the fact that the Holy Prophet assigned Abu Bakr to Omar what would this tell me that he found no one better other than themselves to put together well, if I think about it that, that if you can help me as well to extract understand a bit the wisdom of, of this decision because it's quite deep, but I just wanted to try and, and get as much out of it as possible. Um, well, the wisdom only Allah and His Messenger know. Um, we can probably guess as to what was the uh, uh, reason for doing that. Mm. Um, obviously, he would put, uh, it seems, people together of the same um, kind of caliber. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like Salman and Abu Dhar. Again, that's know. what I was going to uh, mention, that he didn't I, put Abu Dhar. Okay, uh, but Salman was never uh, from Mecca. That, so we can argue there that Salman came from... Yeah, it's nothing to do with Mecca and Medina. It's nothing to do with Ansar and Muhajirin. Uh, because that's why a lot of people will assume, because Ansar and Muhajirin, so it's basically the, the Meccans mixing up with the, uh, the people of Yathrib, Medina. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't on the basis of towns and so on. It was, obviously, okay. that goes to show it was on the... He did between Salman and Abu Dhar okay. because they were really um, uh, of, um, if you like, uh, it reflects their um, uh, devotion mm. um, uh, uh, and loyalty. And, so um, and of course, it happens that amongst, it's well known that it says, uh, the Prophet ﷺ has said that Salman is one of us Ahlul Bayt, which is a huge it's a massive uh, uh, statement. A, state, a status for Salman. Um, it reflects on his status. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ wanted to um, reveal the status of Salman, and he he put it in in, in this statement that Salman he is one of us Ahlul Bayt. He you hasn't know. said that for anyone else. Has and he, he said it for Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar. Okay, and he put them together, so he yeah, they are in the same rank. Um, <clears throat> and he did, uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, for uh, he did muakhad uh, between Abu Bakr and Umar uh, because they, if you like, go hand in hand in terms of uh, 
their um, uh, belief and, and, and conduct. It was them who, if you like, later on we'll see that um, it was Omar who said when the Prophet was ill, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Omar said uh, when the Prophet asked for pen and paper so that he could write um, uh, something for them so that they would never go astray, uh, he said the man is talking is hallucinating. Uh, and uh, Abu Bakr approved of that. So these are the sort of people together, so he put them together. Sure. And uh, as to your question, um, uh, and of course, later on, after the death of the, of, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi um, they go on, these two, uh, Abu Bakr and Umar, they go on to uh, um, assault and invade the house of uh, Fatima Zahra Alayhi Salam. But we'll go, we'll go, we won't go into that at this stage. Yeah. Um, as to your question is that who was uh, the, the brother of uh, uh, the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? Yes. It was none other than Imam Ali alayhi salam. He always used to say, Akhi. Uh, so once again, uh, the Holy um, Prophet, by this, he, he also s makes again another statement that Amir al-Mu'mineen, is my brother mm. and no no other no better than him to be my brother again he's, this, he's uh, of, the, of the caliber imam ali is of the caliber of imam of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam the way you put it there is beautiful of the well. status of imam yes. uh, of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa and of course in the quran allah refers to imam ali as the nafs of rasulullah fi ayat al um uh, uh, Let's, uh, when it says that uh, uh, we call, we will, you call your sons, we call our sons, which is Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, mm -hmm. as far as the Prophet is concerned. And Nisa'ana wa Nisa'akum, you call your women, we call our women, and uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought uh, Fatima al Zahra, wa anfusana wa anfusakum, you bring your own selves, or your own souls. And the Prophet brought uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam. So the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, refers to Imam Ali as this, the nafs or the self of the Prophet and the Prophet himself has declared that he is my brother and he did this pledge of brotherhood between himself and Imam Ali which goes to reflect the status of Imam Ali at this, at this uh, stage with regards to um, the planning what, what did the Holy Prophet um, plan with regards to setting up the Islamic government. Uh, what were the first steps? So he's in Medina now. They're building the mosque um, with regards to um, the foundation of Islam, the, the, the culture of Islam itself. Having your masjid, people always attaining, attending the mosque for, I presume, the Holy Prophet would give lectures. So it would be, uh, as well, the mosque would be Sermons. a school, yeah. seminars yeah. for the people, educating them, explaining the ayahs, yeah. uh, ahkam. Now, <clears throat> with regards to other tribes, like for example, you mentioned there were uh, Christian and Jewish scholars. Was there any problem with, the, with the, their establishments? Were they all freely to coexist in the same city? There's something beautiful as well that um, we can uh, learn from how, how nowadays, 21st century, look what's going on. But 1400 years ago, Muslims, Jews and Christians coexisted in the same city. Was everything okay? Did they have any problems? What was the health of the society? Um. <clears throat> Um, as far as the Prophet Sallallahu was concerned, um, I mean, there are two, mm, more than one angle that we'll, we'll come from. You say health society, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, uh, the uh, Jewish communities or um, Christian communities and so on. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu um, Alaihi had uh, no problem with uh, coexisting with the Jews and Christians and so on. And uh, he always held discussions and dialogues with them. Um, he, uh, um, he dealt with them, traded with them, to the extent that he also, uh, obviously the relation was such that he would borrow money from them. On numerous occasions, 
<coughs> so, so they 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 uh, they, they formed a relationship through um, diplomatic treaties, alliances. Well, that that comes later on. Um, uh, the alliances and so on pact. I, I will mention that. But just let me finish this. That um, so the relationship was such that. Uh, uh, they had enough trust that they, um, a Jewish man would lend money to the Prophet. The Prophet asked money, uh, asked for, for uh, money, and he would lend it. And of course, in one instance, that uh, uh, Jewish man comes along and says, uh, you know, time is up, you need to give, you know, you, were, you promised that you will give me back the money by such and such date, which is today. Um, and of course, the Prophet didn't have money uh, to give it back to him. And uh, so you can see that they were freely in and out. In fact, that person... He said to him, I'll, I won't leave you until you give me the money. So he said, okay. And he stayed with him in the mosque, uh, that, that Jewish man. And um, um, when people were inquiring, he said, it's his right. He, he wants his money and I haven't got the money to pay him back yet. I'll pay him later on. But uh, so as far as coexistence is concerned, um, that was um, um, there. And... Um, not only on, on if like in terms of dialogue and so on, but in terms of social coexistence. And um, uh, but um, <clears throat> you mentioned about pacts and treaties and so on. Yes, when uh, the Prophet uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam settled a little bit, uh, he that needs a, a more discussion. I don't know how much time we have, but the Prophet sallallahu alaihi he started. Um, if you like, uh, coming into pacts and treaties um, with different tribes and different communities in and outside Medina. Um, <clears throat> and uh, his aim was basically he would invite, if you like, a diff the Arab tribe. They were, and he used to tell Quraysh um, right from the beginning when he was in Mecca, you know, uh, all I want is you leave me alone. If you don't accept Islam, fine. But just leave me alone, uh, leave me alone with the Arabs, I mean the Arab tribes, um, so that he go individually. He goes to the Arab tribes individually, or send uh, uh, messengers individually, so that they could uh, invite. He could invite them to Islam, or if they didn't accept Islam, uh, they would sign, if you like, um, peace treaties, um, non-aggression pact, with the with the with the tribes and the people and the groups who uh, would not accept Islam. <clears throat> so this is a, the thing which he did throughout when presumably when they settled down in Medina uh, and they built a mosque and, and um, teaching the people about the Ahkam, Quran, Tafsir and whatever so that they could learn the essence of what the various ayahs, the various verses of the Quran and um, and various duties, religious duties, um, he would uh, send missionaries to uh, uh, different uh, tribes um, and invite them to Islam. If they become Muslim, that's, that's it, that's fine. If they didn't, they would find, they would sign peace treaties or treaties of friendship, non accretion pacts, so that you don't. Uh, uh, um, if you like, show any animosity towards me and I don't show any animosity towards you. There is no tr uh, aggression against one another. Um, but we'll come, I don't know how much time we have. Um, we'll come into that, uh, uh, inshallah, in, in the following episode. We talk about this, which was uh, something um, essential and amongst the first thing that the Prophet ﷺ started to do. Um, and this is the thing which... Uh, of course, the Quraysh weren't happy about it because they could see that this uh, uh, Muhammad sallallahu is spreading his religion uh, and it's becoming more more and more people are embracing, or at least he may he's, he's coming he's signing peace treaties and non-aggression treaties with those who didn't. But we'll come into that later on. Inshallah, Santam. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Jibrail alayhi salam descended upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi and he said that, O oh Muhammad, Allah Almighty says to you, if I hadn't created Ali, there would have been no equal to Fatima. On the planet, on the face of this planet, 
from Adam down. So even Adam would not be co-equal to Fatima Zahra um, uh, according to this hadith.